Alright, hey everyone, welcome back to another part in the autism series that I started on the channel. Um, when we last left off, this is where we got to, and I figure without further delay we would start from this part. Anyway, so, where we left off, Chris's restricted and repetitive behaviors. To receive an autism diagnosis, the DSM-5 requires restricted and repetitive behaviors in at least two of the following four categories. Chris meets all of them. Examples are given below. Example number one, movement and speech. Chris often exhibits echolela, which means he, consist he constantly repeats phrases from his favorite television shows, movies, and video games, regardless of whether they fit the current situation. In some instances, he calls this humor. He tends to use sophistic ne neolog ne neologicisms. Huh. That is, he creates new words that only he himself understands and expects other people to cover him up. He uses the same terms and, ex and exact phrases frequently. Many articles on this very wiki have been written to explain the resulting quickisms. We'll have to go into that uh, article later on down the line. Autism is also linked to speech impediments. Chris has trouble with articulation and often slurs words together like... Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce that. Oh, uh, that one says... Um, I'm not, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that one either. Uh, he often swears words together, like the examples shown below. He frequently stutters, clutters his words, and speaks in a higher-pitched register. Chris's unusual man manure Chris's unusual mannerisms are another sign. He rocks back and forth dubbed the autistic shuffle, especially when stressed. He uses the same gestures repeatedly, such as his high stress, the claw fail, and the infamous dramatic glasses removal. He feels the need to refer to people by their full names, plainly vis visible when he talks about himself, Clyde Cash, or Adam Stackhouse. An overlooked but crucial characteristic defending a Affecting all of Chris's. Oh my god, I can't speak today. <sighs> affecting all of Chris's physical activity is his display of hypnotonia, which refers to a distinct lack of muscle tone. In biological terms, referring to tension rather than the colloquial use to describe muscle strength. Although raw physical strength is also affected by it, which affects motor skills as well as stamina. Chris is not only very clumsy, he shows abnormally low muscle strength and gets tired quickly even by simply shuffling around for a couple of minutes, which cannot be entirely explained by a, which cannot be entirely explained by his lack of physical exercise. Whether Chris is shown sitting, he is spread around like a lag what oh my goodness. He is spread around like a rag doll, hanging limply, as his muscles cannot support his entire body properly instances on sameness. One of his biggest one of the biggest symptoms of autism Chris displays is his fear and resistance to change. Well beyond well beyond the point that it could even be related to his autism. Chris is, lo is reluctant to get or even look for a job as he has only worked for four months in his entire life, has never come close to moving out, has a very hard time selling or giving up his toys or shirts, wouldn't stick to a diet and exercise program, doesn't try new ways to attract women, and has a very hard time coping with his banishment from the game place, where he would usually spend his Fridays. This might be this might be resistance to the change of his old lifestyle of just going to school and coming home and playing video games. His proven tendencies to avoid responsibilities and self-improvement show that he is trying to remain a child or simply fears failure of all types. Chris thinks in absolutes and in terms of clearly defined steps in order to do something. He thinks there must be sex on the third, on or by the third date. He describes his sadness in terms of his heart level and briefly mentioned a scale of respect. 
he feels that if he just knows the correct steps to getting a sweetheart, he will be able to find one easily. His crash course in dating and suggestions to Blanca assume that a relationship should follow a rigidly predetermined progression instead of a natural flow. In an exchange of emails to Jackie, Chris responded to her frank descriptions of his habits and lifestyle by saying she has exceeded the hurtful truth level. While he knows he should be appreciative of hearing the truth about himself, this was the only way he could wrap his brain around the abstract idea enough to be able to tell her he thought she'd gone too far. Some autistic people follow rules so strictly that it is bordering OCD. Chris, however, has the opposite problem. Problem? Problem. <laughs> Ugh. He lives in a filthy, unorganized house, making comics with a very inconsistent plot, wears the same shirt for days at a time, and disobeys the law when it inconveniences him. Number 3. Fixations and Special Interests Chris has an extremely narrow range of interests. He seems to only give a damn about video games, cartoons, prowling for his next sweetheart, his initials, and Sonichu. So much to the point that he practically plans him somewhere. Pl plans. He practically places him somewhere in everything he creates. He often wishes to combine the two interests. Unnatural relationships with inanimate objects are also a sign of autism. Chris's evident obsessions with his medallion, his PlayStation 3, and any number of other items that clutter up his room. Since, aut since autistics have difficulty in maintaining relationships with people, they end up becoming emotionally dependent on objects, though this symptom is seen much more in autistic children. Although he does not demonstrate any competence, competency with them, Chris has a fixation on numbers and, and statistics that would generally be irrelevant to others. He describes measures in concrete terms, e.g. 5 miles from the city instead of outside the city, and has a particular obsession with times and dates, time stamping nearly every scene in the comic and giving his character birthdays and middle names that have no relevance to the plot, unless it becomes convenient to age up the characters. Needless to say, Chris's tendency to blurt out exact dates and times, assuming he's not talking about talking out of his ass, have made the job of quickie chronologists Chronologists must eat much easier. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm having such a hard time speaking, so bear with me. Ugh. On the other hand, his haphazard treatment of dates and times in the comics has led to countless continuity errors. Chris's fixation also manifests as brand loyalty. Chris has been loyal to Nintendo, Sega, and Sony, to the, ex to the exclusion of Microsoft. He's loyal to McDonald's and dislikes Burger King. He felt that Harry Potter was a threat to Pokemon. Oh, that's, that's funny. His brand loyalty went beyond simple preferences and extended to actual obsessions and hatreds. He'd hype up acts and Walmart in videos. He blindly, he'd blindly trust advertisements and even included ads of his own in his comics. Chris's transgender identity is yet another fixation. According to psycho psychologist Ken Zucker, trans folks are more likely to be autistic than the general population. This link is caused by, among other traits, autistics' tendency to fixate on issues, in this case, gender. Many autistic males, including Chris, also have qualities that could be considered girly, such as passiveness. Since they have, since they have less social awareness, they may behave in ways that can be considered atypical for either sex and displays less regard for gender roles. Chris and many of our autistics perceive their quirks as being female in a male body, or vice versa, and assume that they will fit better as their desired sex. His fixation showed itself strongly when Se Sega changed Sonic's arms from tan to blue. Chris launched a crusade that ended with him macing an innocent GameStop employee, a criminal offense launched entirely by a minor change to a fictional character who happens to be Chris's icon. Number 4. Sensory Processing Autism affects how the brain interprets the senses. Chris is often either hippo or hypersensitive to sensory stimulation. 
Chris often wears his accessories and medallions over top of over top his clothing to avoid skin contact with metals and plastics. This is evident in the way in which Chris wears his watch over the cuff of his sleeve and wraps his medallion through the collar of his shirt. Most obvious, however, is his wrist warmer, which he places on the chain of his medallion. Chris has stated that it is a part of my necklace. It is Wilson. Oh, wait, hold on. It is, it's a Wilson wrist warmer. I used to cover the discomfort of the number of links back there. Well, it sounds also bother Chris. He was prohibited from attending prep rallies in high school and has expressed hesitation about visiting bars because of the noise. Sensory dysfunction isn't limited to the five external senses. It extends to internal hidden senses, such as balance, body position, hunger, first time, gag reflex, and internal body pressure, such as when one has to use the facilities. What does that say? Uh, severity of Chris's autism. He may be high functioning, which I actually doubt, who would want to admit the thousands of strangers that are actually severely challenged. But that does not mean he can function like a non-mentally challenged person. I don't even know who quoted that. I couldn't tell who it was even when I zoomed in. <laughs> Informally, autism may be subdivided into separate classifications based on the intelligence and degree of function the autistic individual possesses. For a general idea, this crude scale could have levels of high functioning, medium functioning, and low functioning. Chris has latched onto this concept concept and will frequently qualify his condition, say he, saying he has high-functioning autism, or HFA. Generally, HFA is loosely defined as the ability to live in a mainstream world as opposed to being institutionalized, having near-normal comprehension, demonstrating fluent speech, and possessing average or above-average intellect. This presents Christian with an easy scapegoat and alibi. He cannot be blamed for his own f failures because he has autism, but he does not accept treatment or advice for his medium or low level autistic traits because he's high functioning and therefore nearly normal. Is it? No. No. Did someone actually photoshop a picture of Chris's face on someone else's body? Oh my goodness, that is... That's... <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Trolls have often noted that the high-functioning qualifier is not a clinical diagnosis and is not rec recognized by the dsm 4 tr or the ICD-10. This usually goes hand-in-hand -hand with questioning the severity and or diagnosis of Chris's impairment, if not outright calling him a liar. However, the Chandlers didn't make the HFA label up, and... Okay, and compared to kids who can barely speak and just walk in circles all day, all day, Chris is relatively close to neurotypical. Semantics aside, though, it's clear that Chris is far from normally functioning. And an updated psychological profile only... Oh my goodness, I need to start proofreading these. Only an updated psychological profile would would really provide insight into the complex and controversial mixture of autism and mental illness that is present within Christian. The newer DSM-5 does distinguish different levels of severity based on the amount of support needed, but a new term is Autism Spectrum Disorder Level 1, not high-functioning autism. Additionally, the autism community detests functioning labels since they oversimplify the spectrum as a one-dimensional scale, when describing whether or not someone can speak, the community prefers verbal and nonverbal instead of high or low functioning. Disgustingly, but, not per but perhaps not surprisingly, Chris detests low-functioning autistics in the, exact in the exact manner that he fears normal people would detest him. In Mailbag 25, he compares those with low-functioning autism with those who suffer from severe retardation or severe brain damage, thinking that they would have their arms linked together, have deformations, be combined to wheelchairs or crutches, and drool and grunt and growl. Oof, Chris, yeesh. 
He has also described them with extremely cruel and derisive terms, calling them windows to hell and compared them to zombies. Oof, Chris, your bigotry is showing. The irony of his resentment towards low-functioning autistic people is that he is a severely autistic cousin, as revealed in the autism papers. This probably means that either Chris is not aware of his own relatives, very probable, or he has disowned members of his own family on the basis of them having the same medical condition that he has, albeit more severely affected by it. Being the autism Nazi he is. He explains that he refuses to date a girl with any form of autism because he fears that seeing them will make them think about what he might be like if he had anything other than high-functioning autism. Chris believes that he can do much more than any low-functioning low autistic could, even as he's living with his mother well into his 30s. Has never had a real girlfriend or held a steady job, and solos his pants on a semi-regular basis. Still, presuming Chris is autistic, he is high-functioning since he can talk, draw, drive, write, and draw, even if he's not the best at these things. However, this also means that he has the same medical condition as the Temple Grandin and Santoshi Tajiri, amongst many others. Yet he has failed to do anything significant with his adult life, hence proving that, he, that his vulgarity and failure are, for the most part, this is for elaborated on below, his own fault. Okay, um, I'll go ahead and uh, save this last section for the uh, next video. Um, if you guys are, you know, still here, um, I do have an ongoing, uh, uh, I do have an ongoing contest going on uh, in my Discord. Um, entering the Discord, going into the dedicated channel, you can react to the message that I have posted in that channel, and you will automatically be entered the giveaway for some Steam keys. Um, link to my Discord will also be in the description down below. If you guys enjoyed, go ahead and let me know by leaving a like, as it helps to inform me whether or not I should stick to the same content or change it up a little. And with that being said... Thank you guys for coming. I really do appreciate it. And next, and we will continue on with the rest of the autism article in the next video. Until then, take care, you guys, and I will see you later. Bye.